Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for grabbing at yourself. Thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. And we have an awesome, awesome episode. We have Tim Luke and Matt Lappin, who is related to me, and they work for The Late Show with Colbert. Neat. That's yes. right. We used to. Mm-hmm. We used to. We're currently on strike. And, and remind us how many days this has been going on for. Yeah, how long is how, it? How many days now? It's 140-something. Wow. I, don't, I don't... Yeah, it's a lot. It's, too, it's more than I expected. I remember at the very beginning, I like marked... May 2nd, I was like, okay, the last one was 100 days, and it probably won't be that much. Yeah. And 100 will be in August. I'm like, shit, that's a long time. And now we're past that, of course. And anyway, I, I, have, I have hopes because um, uh, we just um, scored some victories. Uh, um, some shows were looking to come back um, uh, despite the lack of contract with the WGA and SAG. And uh, Drew Barrymore was looking to come back. Um, and uh, I saw um, that. She, she now has declined. She has. She will not come back after some picketing and um, a little and some, pushback. Mm-hmm. Some pushback. There's a lot of pushback. And then Bill Maher um, was also going to come back on the heels of Drew Barrymore, and now right. um, he is not coming back. Also on the heels of her heels, not coming back. So um, that's a small win. Now we're going to negotiate next week, and there's hope that with this leverage and with um, and with um, hopefully some good spirits, we'll get a deal. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then we'll be back. Just laughing it up about the news soon enough. Right. So, so obviously it's great that Drew walked back and is deciding not to uh, come back with, with scab riders. But the downside of that is Matt had purchased the last available E.T. costume. What? On Etsy. <laughs> yes. And was ready to pick it yeah, in full <coughs> E.T. In full E.T. In full Absolute E.T. Garb. It's on its way. Um, oh, my God. It's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna wear it one day, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have a sign that says "Thank you, Drew." <laughs> uh huh. And now it'll be an uplifting story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah now in, now instead of uh, instead of them having a you, uh, thank you for being good. a beef. Right, right. Let e- thanks you fair wages. E-T. Good. Yeah. Et needs fair <laughs> wages. Um. We were talking about what were we talking? Why did I bring up uh, Et uh, eating ass the other day? Remember because that it was a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I posited that uh, you would put uh, Reese's Pieces up your butt for ET to to to, to do that, but right. I forget why it was. Maybe it was that a probe joke. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't recall. <laughs> anyway, thanks for having us. Um, oh, yeah. No, we're so welcome. This is a podcast about artists, creative people. <laughs> uh, we just figured we know a lot of people who are doing interesting stuff and wanted to give them some time to be able to come on here and let us know what you're doing. Uh, before the strike, what were you doing at uh, the Colbert Show? We did an Easter special. It was called Ooh. Sunny the Easter Bunny and the Maga Hall of Madness. Mm. Um, yeah, it might be worth uh, just clarifying. Matt is a writer. He's mm-hmm. in the WGA, so he is officially That's striking. Right. That's right. I am a non-writing producer, so I have not officially been on strike. Right. Um, I, I'm an animation producer and director, and so Matt and I often work closely together. Um, and a lot of that has been various sort of animated specials on Late Show or sort of in the Colbert uh, orbit. Right. Um, so, you know, it's been a lot of, I mean, we met 11 years ago, yeah, almost I'm, now. I'm I was Colbert an intern Report. on Colbert Rapport. Matt had been with that team since its inception. That's essentially. cool. I mean, you I say, really you, you should probably talk about, like, you, you started as a, a PA. Uh, with them? No, but you go like further back. Strangers, I right? go further back. Right. I was on Strangers with Candy, a show uh, way back when. The um, best, as, one of the best shows ever, Comic Central's uh, ever produced. It's such mm-hmm. a great show. It's, it's such a weird show. And I was um, sort of um, indoctrinated into a great form of comedy. I don't, maybe I shouldn't use the word indoctrinated these days, <laughs> but it's the best form of indoctrination because um, I was a youngster. I was a young 23 year old and I got to be a writer's assistant uh, slash script coordinator for uh, Stephen Colbert, Amy Sedaris, and Paul Donello, who, who were just a brilliant um, uh, uh, comic three O, and um, and I learned oh so much, um, uh, both uh, mostly good, <laughs> so, and <laughs> mostly we all good. and we learned some things together to how to produce things, and um, and now I still work with Stephen Colbert and Paul Donello on the Late Show. We still to this day, mm-hmm. all this time later, but back then. Um, 
Yeah, it, we, uh, it was it. What a great show. And um, and and I don't know what to say about it. It's just there's so much to say about it. We it's don't interesting. Have it comes in threes, you know, like we, we grew up watching the Three Stooges. Our, our fathers are a set of three brothers. And you're kind of like you, Paul and Steve. But I'm four. So then I, I've, bro- I've broken that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, there's always Curly Joe. Uh-huh. Um, I think Paul Pinello once, once joked, I was like Brian, the fourth Beatle, I was like Brian Epstein. Uh-huh. And, there, uh, there was Natalie fourth, dressed. There was a fourth Marx brother too, right? Huh? Was there, was there? Was there a fourth? Um, uh, Shemp. Yeah. No, it's not <laughs> Shemp. Shemp. <laughs> well, there were really five in total of, of Stooges wise. Really? That's right. Um, we, uh, my, one of my main comic influences is, well, I mean, not the main, but they were certainly there at the beginning of the Three Stooges, just because they're soothing to me. <laughs> we grew up in a household yeah. that we grew up in, types of households, lots of um, uh, birds, dogs, um, it's like pigs. Also, buddies. physical violence ASMR. A lot of kids. Wait, what, is, wait, wait, wait. what is physical violence ASMR? What no, is that's that? That's the three stooges. They yeah. just Uh-oh. kick the shit out of each I other. Li- I used to go to sleep to them. I, li- oh, I would yeah? put them on and I would and I would go to sleep to the sweet sounds of the three stooges. And if shit's really bad in my life still, I'll put them on because I'll be like it's kind the of, comfort show. It's be okay. Yeah, I mean I mean I think Woo-hoo. one of the reasons that Matt and I uh, gelled when we first met is that I do cartoons and Matt is sort of a living cartoon, as are the other members of the Lappin family. Yeah, what's I've, up with you Lappin boys? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I think you probably get some of that from growing up on the Stooges, who are, you know, sort of the some of the original uh, yes, flesh yeah. and blood cartoon characters, more or less. Yes, and a bunch of Jewish boys, too. I, right? I love that you call it violence ASMR. It used to be called slapstick. Uh-huh. Right. Now, now we're like redefining everything. Hold on. Am I, am I coming through audio? Yeah, yeah, am I can I? hear you. You guys Whoa. might want to hold your mics a little closer to your head yes. or get them over here a little Let bit more. Do. Got it. Yeah. Sorry, Otherwise, good. Like yeah, no, oh, I hear yeah. you coming through. No one's yeah, on we would, uh Yeah, we would watch. I remember uh, growing up, we had a friend named Bobby Bogert. And uh, we love the movie Boker. Excalibur. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, in the beginning of Excalibur, it's really strange because there's a scene where a knight makes love to a woman in full plate mail. And it's very confusing how that's possible. Mm-hmm. But this was the first he would hang out and he slept over one night and we watched Excalibur. And he started to cry when a knight made love to his, his woman. He was crying. Why was Bobby it, crying? Because Why? he never saw that before. <laughs> Wait, wait. Oh so God. the first time he ever saw sex on screen was a knight in full plate mail. He was all on. fucked up. Did he think that's like what you needed to have to have sex? You need to get in a full plate mail suit. Well, he played. Did a you know lot this of, Bobby Bobart? <laughs> this Bobby, Bobby character. Bogart. He was a tall. I did. And hi, Bobby, if you're listening. Yeah, hey, I, I, I miss you, and I, I hope to see you. And I'm it, Bobby Bogart was a very good, very emotional young lad at the time. Um, and he was, I mean, oh my God. I mean, I, I have to defend him a little bit because he was dealing with some fucking maniacs. I could take that much. But yes, and because we were already, Excalibur fucking was no problem for us. Like, we were playing a, like a, you know, a very early strip poker game on our computer at that time, fully sanctioned by our parents. Right. There's video of this. I, just, I recently downloaded, a, oh, I, wow. I had transferred a lot of eight <clears throat> millimeters from our childhood. And oh, shit. Yeah, it's like the strip poker game. I mean, you know. Was that'd that be, on, it'd be was, tough to do strip poker if you're in full plate mail. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> would be, be, know, take off. Could full be easier. <laughs> it might be easier because you're just like, you know, one cutlass, <laughs> one right. shoulder yeah, blade. You, you can definitely win you if you're pieces. in the full suit of armor. Yeah. You had to wait, though, for that. The like, strip- you would win, and then you'd, ha- and you'd, be, you'd have to be like, here it comes. It's loading, and there's a titty. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> I don't poker? think I've ever played strip poker. The only time I've heard about strip poker or thought about strip poker, I think it was like fifth grade and everyone was talking about it, like a thing to do, but no one did it. Well, this this one was on, I think it was on Commodore 64 mm. was the one that we had. Yeah. Well, it, it was all green screen right. and it was basically like ASCII code that formed uh, yes. what they would call a nude lady. But in letters. Ah, better better <laughs> times gone by. Oh, yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> That's what we had when we were young. Try but, playing with your balls to that. <laughs> better times gone by. We had a uh, you know strip poker on the Atari, and people were green lighting things like Strangers with Candy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, that was even. That's true. I mean, um, I think they would again if, if like, you know, the people who are in it now, everyone in it, like, you know, kind of got more popular. So, like, you'd they would now, but I don't think we'd do it again because... 
it was of its time, and I don't believe we could do a lot of the jokes we did. Yeah, then yeah. successfully um, without without ruffling some feathers there. Well, how do you Probably. feel about that? How do you feel like that? Because I feel like that kind of stuff is on the <laughs> flip again. You know, I feel like we're coming out of the era when everyone's really watching their ass so much, and Agreed. like into an era where people might say something that used to be a, like a pretty mellow joke and not that inflammatory. They'll say that now to be like the edge lord, the king to make themselves special. Exactly. You're always going to go. I mean, that's the thing when, you know, it, it's if, if you're a comedian and you're trying to be safe, it's very tough. I mean, but you're also trying not to, you know, the, the, the biggest rule for me is don't punch, punch down. You know right. what I mean? And like when you're punching up, um, like, you know, I feel like all's fair in love and comedy uh, most of the time. Um, and, you know, if you're reflecting society, you're going to get into some some troublesome territory. Yeah. And, you know, really, in the end, it's just that depends who's telling the joke. Right. It, it, I feel like and like, you know, if I'm writing a joke for Steven, it's different if I'm telling it, if I'm if I'm writing for a person of color or whatever. It's right. just like it's different who's telling it. So ideally, you write a joke and you get have the perfect person tell it, because if the wrong person tells it, people just won't hear it. You know what I mean? They're just going to. For sure. They're going to say this is racist or this is sexist. And it probably is like coming from certain certain people. But from coming from other from other people, it, it could be brilliant and resonant. So. Right. Well, I also think just in terms of like my impression of strangers is that yeah. it's it's an aggressively bizarre and surreal show, which <laughs> I think uh, <clears throat> there are there is comedy now that is kind of trying to go back and hit that nerve again. Because yeah. I think, uh, at least in my experience, like the past 10 years, everyone I knew went through like UCB 101, 102. Like everyone learned the rules of sketch comedy and improv. And so when you watch well-written comedy that follows that formula, it's not as exciting anymore because you kind of know all the component parts and how it gets put together. Whereas something like Strangers, which just like kind of like your brain operates, like goes to really weird places <laughs> yeah. that you can't possibly predict. Um, that's just like to me, that's kind of like gut punch funny because of how unexpected it is. And I think like a show like, you know, what Tim Robinson does with I Think You Should Leave is starting to yeah. like there is, again, this appetite where like we've kind of come around to like eh, SNL like plays it safe. They do kind of like the safe sketches and like we go to different places to find the weirder stuff now. Yeah. Uh, and what I've seen of like Gen Z and the kids, the like kids these days, they, they tend, they seem to like more random humor and whatnot, which I think can be folded into the, the kind of stuff you guys yeah. are doing. I think they do like that random humor. I know what you're talking about. I'm on TikTok all the time. Like mm -hmm. that's my Me biggest too. medium is a uh, TikTok. I've they most, most me. followers there. China knows me. China's got I me know. From I it's know me and, me, and, uh, me and Winnie the Pooh are tight now. You know, we're really <laughs> I tight. I look forward to a, like a Chinese man stealing, like a Chinese national stealing my identity and there's a Chinese Matt Lapp and then I meet him one day. <laughs> they have my social we security number. They got, TikTok has my social security number because I'm in like the creator program that oh, I get wow. paid to like yeah. you know, push merchandise also made in China. Oh, nice. But um, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, tic <laughs> the TikTok. It's, sir, it's, it's, it's a mind fuck ADD I, paradise. I think it's, it's random, but it's also like um, kind of like memes, right? It's based on memes so right. it becomes really self-referential to a point where maybe half of the people who are enjoying it actually don't get the original reference and yeah. then anybody coming in looks completely random but there's like a few people who understand it fully and it's like right. there's, totally a, there's almost different ways to enjoy memes now or like yes you can be like well versed in the like you know uh, deep layered dialect that it takes to understand a meme, or you can just look at it and go like, that's so weird. I guess I like it. <laughs> like, right, 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 right. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good trajectory. Uh, again, I'd like to see a little more, like, I mean, for as, as weird as, as Strangers was, I think it was a very thoughtful show. It was as actually, far as the writing I, I was going to say sure. that my mom didn't like it because she thought it was too real. <laughs> like the character of Amy Sedaris, like going back to high school and the drug stuff. She was uh -huh. like, oh, she came from like a, you know, a, a place in Texas. She had like nine brothers, sister. They're all going to jail, getting prison, all this stuff. So she was like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. It's too real for me. <laughs> sure. Many of them based on, many characters based on a true story. I mean, yeah, I got, <laughs> that's I got, that's what really resonates. Yeah. Oh, I, like Jelly Nick uh, has to take his um, a kiln. He's like homeless. And he's like dragging around the pottery kiln. That's probably, one of the, that's one thing that really stuck <laughs> yeah, with me. That was the career day episode. <laughs> career day episode. yeah that's right oh, reach God. for the lowest star 
<laughs> I mean, so you were writers. You started as writer's assistant. You yes. you ended up pitching enough jokes that like they made you. A then writer, I was right? a writer. It wasn't a guild show yet, so I didn't get in the guild through that. But I was an additional writer, and it was yeah, it was but amazing. Was, it was, the, was best. the room just the three of them and you, or for the most part, we we br- cool. we brought in a couple. Mostly, there was like outside scripts written by a few people like um uh, mike lee and black wrote a really good one which one did he write mm-hmm. he wrote uh uh boggy nights it was oh, the one where i was in that one the yeah, dance you were you were in the dance uh, yeah right. it was when jerry finds out that um uh the boy she's dating in school is her is her secret son <laughs> right right <laughs> and um yeah, it's it, that's a good one. That's it. it was looking. I think that episode before. can be credited with the um, the proliferation of moist being a meme world. Nice. <laughs> you just talk about our moist seller. Is that the moist episode? Is a snack cake? Is that where that one's in? I'm I, moist, I thought those were moist sellers. Yeah, moist is a snack cake down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love, I love, I love, I miss that show so much. I want, I want to say that the uh, Jerry Blank stormed the Capitol, and she was, <laughs> but she wasn't. She was just she hangs with the wrong crew. Like she, uh-huh. you know, she's yeah. not. She she didn't want to overthrow. She she's not very pro Trump, but she, she could, definitely runs with the, with, with I some MAGA crew. I could see her crew. screaming, "I got something to say!" Yeah, right. And she definitely would would wipe her ass on the towels. So you must have followed. <laughs> um, you must have followed Stephen then all the way to when the Colbert Report first came out and branched off of the Daily Show. That's right. He was yeah. on the Daily Show during Strangers, and then oh, that's right. There was some. Yeah, other. and then so I then I we we parted ways for a while, and I did other things. I did. Um, Floor laying, some floor <laughs> laying, and then I did, but I did some like uh, reality TV. I went, I did Crank Yankers, which oh, is a I show. Oh, I remember Crank Yankers um, with puppets doing prank phone calls. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel um, did that. I mean, started way back in two thousand two, and then they moved to LA when Kimmel started his show, and we, and I moved to LA uh, briefly as well, which I, and I didn't love it. Yeah, I, I, my choices were either L.A. or New York, and I'm here for that reason. I didn't particularly love the vibe. It's just, I mean, it's not, not, a, it's not a city. I wouldn't consider it a city. It's yeah. like, it's, it's, I mean, it is kind of, but it's... It's a bunch like, of nice man. buildings connected by very congested highways. It, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, it, I, I consider it like the capital city of entertainment. Like right. the same way that Washington, sure. D.C. is the capital of the nation. Like it's fun to visit. There's like cool museums and things to do. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't it, it feels like kind of an in-between space mm. that a lot of people have nevertheless because of uh, the availability of jobs, you know, laid down roots in. Right. Um, but yeah, New York to me feels like a home. Mm. Um, so real. And I, like, mean, I, I like a desert as much as the next guy, but. Yeah, it's like it's, it's an and I love the city. ocean. The ocean's nice, and very cool things happen there. Very cool, very delicious food is made. Mm-hmm. Great yeah. filmmakers have lived there. We also like. The, I had some good times there. I mean, I lived. I grew up in San Diego, so like okay. I was familiar fish with taco. it. Fish taco. Like, oh yeah, fish taco town. It Shade was amazing. Fish taco. I feel that way about New York somewhat, somewhat in the art world, because like art, uh, New York's supposed to be like the center of the art mm-hmm. world as well, and then you get here and you might have some of the same kind of like barriers to entry yeah. that you'll experience going to LA as a young wannabe actor or writer. This one know. knows. Morgan knows about that. Oh, yeah. Well, Morgan's <laughs> the preeminent collage artist of New York City. Uh, He's the number one. I appreciate that. I keep saying it. He really it's is. true. It really is. <laughs> You're the most I'm visible right. and active. He's got to keep going. Pushing forward. And, and, yeah. And he's got, don't you want to promote your own? When is this going to broadcast this podcast? Don't you want to promote your uh, art show that's coming up? Yeah, you better do yeah, it. That's going to be up for a while, right? It's get. Well, there's a bunch of things going on. So I, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but I'm. Uh, there's a uh, private members club that Ooh. has two locations in Williamsburg called Alte A L T E, um, and uh, so they made me the in-house curator, and so I started to curate art shows. Yeah, um, it's not easy. Their spaces are really nice. The spaces are beautiful. They're smoke shops. They're like weed shops. But like when you told me that, you were like, oh, I'm going to go do a show at the weed store. And I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. I'll, I'll swing by. And then <laughs> like they had a whole like Art Basel tent area in the back. It looked really right. nice. Right. The place I, was clean and yeah, big. I'm now cool. I have to say private members club. It is a private <laughs> members club. I mean, so is the National Legally. Art Leagues. Legally, it's right. a private members club. Because right. let's be honest, there's, a, there's a, a lot of artists that hear that. You know, you, I, I'm telling them, I'm like, I would like to uh, invite you to show work at the gallery slash dispensary. And 
<laughs> so I'm like, I'm hitting up against certain artists that are like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable showing there. It's a dispensary. Mm. won't be taken seriously. What if Whoa, one artist yeah. said, Shots uh, fired. I won't say a name, but one artist was like, <laughs> I swear in my life. Um, what if New up. York Times comes in and sees my work and I'm trying to be a serious artist and writes an article about my work being in a dispensary? Well, if you're trying to be a serious artist and New York Times writes an article about you, good, good job. That's good. Then you're super awesome. <laughs> then it's working. That's what happens. You become an awesome dude, bro, Seth. Yeah. That, no. that's, that's one of the Do reasons. Do not want to be cool. They were just actually featured in a, a well-known uh, art magazine. <laughs> yeah. But that's besides the point. If yeah, art sure. were to be associated just, with drugs in some way. Oh, no. That, that would that never happen. Destroy that could never reputation. happen. <clears throat> it is, it, you art. know, I get it. I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. know what to say. But listen, it's a beautiful space. The work that I have there now is absolutely amazing. Tim's work is there. Oh, excellent. Did I see um, it when I was there? And we did a it? collab. We did a, uh, it was Matt's idea and I drew it. Uh, Peace Voltron. Oh. Uh, yeah, explain so Peace Voltron. It's, it's, Voltron. It's, it's a Voltron. Well, I mean, it came out of, it was a bit we tried to pitch for the late show mm. like four years ago when things seemed really bad. Yes. Right. Which now should tell you, so, yeah, the fact that we finally ended up realizing it four years later uh, means things haven't really progressed since yeah. there. Uh, but the idea was like, uh, what what sort of a superhero could we possibly call on in these troubled times? Uh, and so Matt landed on Peace Voltron, which is a Voltron of Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, yes. Mother Teresa, John Lennon. And then Elvis forms the head. That's, right. uh, That's funny. And so we pitched around the head for a while. We, yeah, were, nice. we had Santa for a while. Then. Santa? San yeah. We were just trying to think of like, you know, who are the, who are the figures that are, are kind of undeniably um, peaceful and populist <laughs> well, that, we, that we could all agree on? <laughs> yeah. But now we, he's, he's needed even more. And yeah. so, I mean, I, I would love to do actual shorts of it, but, you know, time, money. And, but like the, the peace Voltron goes in with the best of intentions, but it, it but but the the, the different uh, limbs just start <laughs> arguing. And one problem they have is Elvis is the head, and he's always on the nod. He doesn't, and so they have to. <laughs> then the peace Voltron just has to go and score Elvis um, <laughs> uh, narcotics to wake him up. <laughs> and it's excellent. So the peace Voltron gets derailed a lot. Yeah, oh man. And it just represents, you know, how in how in the in the world, you know, it's it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to collaborate. You know what I mean? It's very yeah. hard. It's hard sometimes. If you successfully do, you could really do anything. That's so funny. I love it. he's on the nod. <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't know. Hey, yeah, 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 Elvis, he, he went to sleep. He, he fell asleep again. <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, Mother Teresa. Which is, uh, oh, you know, yes. it, it's especially inconvenient given <laughs> that he's the head of yeah. the whole Voltron. <laughs> so I need well, to scroll him some Benzedrine. Yeah. <laughs> so I just need to bring like a peanut butter fried sandwich if I need to defeat <laughs> Peace Voltron. Yeah, That's yeah right. that'll, that'll put him on the couch for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta ask you guys, since you're in the, the fight right now, you're in, you're, you know, trying to protest against it, how much of it's really about AI? How much of it's really about them just being stingy and not paying you what you're worth? Ooh, it's, I, I'd say it's equally, it, it's equal parts. Really? I mean, AI and stinginess, certainly, and they both go hand in hand. The sting, you know, uh, a, they want to use AI to be stingy. I mean, the only... Right. The only goal we, 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 with corporations um, uh, are it, it, the, the, the it's money. It's the money. It's the profit margins. And I'm okay with profit margins. You know, I'm a capitalist. <laughs> but um, when the profit margins are this obscene, at a certain point, you have to be called for it. You know, yeah. in America, we've set the record for, for corporate greed. And, and, it, and we've done pretty well. I mean, like in the 80s, it was like greed is good, Gordon Gecko. And that was considered to be a very greedy time. And we're way past that now. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Gordon Gecko is like, holy fucking shit. Right. I mean, he's Michael Douglas and he's still alive. And, <laughs> and he almost died from eating pussy, but he's okay. <laughs> Thank God. But I digress. <laughs> you hear about this? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, also the AI. Yes. But the AI is a concern because um, uh, the studios will, will use um, AI to... Um, one imagines... Um, avoid first draft writing, you know, because scripts can be generated via AI. These, right. these, the, the AIs are uh, uh, amazing. I mean, uh, any, uh, I'm guessing most writers who are protesting against the AI have tried the AI, and that's why we know, like, right. holy fuck, like, we better put some safeguards up. And probably been Otherwise, trained. It's probably been trained on their work. 
Because exactly. they That's have the access to the scripts that exist and they wrote those. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, the it, we're not in the room negotiating, so we, we can't know exactly like where no. the sticking points are. But no, no, the no. way that I see it is that, you know, with with residuals, with, uh, you know, uh, writing room minimums and stuff like that. That's those are all known issues that we've seen get worse right. throughout the years that we can point to and say we have clear demands for what needs to change about this to make it sustainable. Whereas AI is this sort of like terrifying future that we don't know how uh, advanced it will get in the next three years that this contract's going to cover. Right. So the the intention there seems to be we want to put up safeguards to make sure that like you cannot use this in the immediate future to put writers and actors and artists out of work. Right. Uh, and I think there's definitely going to be ways to like AI will inevitably become folded into our everyday lives and society to a certain extent as other advances in technology have. Uh, but when those other advances happen, you know, we had to have the same fight of how do we put up safeguards to make sure that we're using it only for its benefit and not to um, basically take work away from people. Right. Um, right. The, the scariest thing about AI that I think we've seen from the writing standpoint is not what chat GPT can do, which is still impressive, but there was an article uh, written by Simon Rich, who is a former SNL writer and like a prolific uh, comedy writer, show creator, director, um, who apparently has a friend that he grew up with who now works in AI and, and showed him like, look, we know that chat GPT can't write good jokes, but there's this other, um, AI system that we haven't released to the public yet that can write funny jokes. And they mm. like, they, uh, he prints a number of jokes in the column and says, can you guess which ones were written by humans and which were written by AI? They're all basically like pretty good onion headlines. Right. Uh, and then of course the reveal is, gotcha, they were all written by the AI. Um, so that is where it gets, uh, they're pretty funny. Especially scary. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Especially if they're funny. <clears throat> and all of us, for the most part, I mean, we're a little bit older. We're not that old, but a little bit older. But we all began with analog. Yeah. We all began there. Um, and someone that utilized, you know, started there, I still, I mean, it's it's real fun to poke around to see what AI could do. Yeah. I mean, from, um, and Matt, maybe you could play some of the voices <laughs> that you've created, some of the things that you've said, but I just want to read something quickly. I asked mm -hmm. Chat GTP, <coughs> sorry, Chat GPT, I'm dyslexic. Um, <laughs> I asked name to, of all time. <laughs> right. I, I asked it to write a country song about a cowboy who finds um, his wife making love to a wizard. Hmm. And I just want to read you the first, like, whatever's, because... Read it know, out. And of course... I'm excited about this. Everyone is really shocked. They're like, oh my God, it gets so to the point and everything. So anyways, it goes, When I was riding on the prairie under the Texas sun with my heart so heavy, didn't know what I'd become. Came home early to a side I couldn't race. A wizard in my darling in a lover's embrace. I'm a cowboy with a heart tried and true. But when I saw that wizard, I knew what I had to do. I threw a punch right at his, ma right at his magical grace because he was with my woman in my sacred place. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. That's so like, rhyming. I like choked on my own spit while I was doing that. <laughs> cowboy and you don't see too much cowboy and wizard porn. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm shocked there is no cowboy slash what's wizard the rule? porn. What's the, what's the porn rule again? The rule whatever? That a, every, por porn? every porn exists? Oh, I it's rule 34. Cowboy and wizard porn. Let's see what happens. I looked up a cowboy porn. I think they're just orange. individually. Oh, there's definitely cowboy and wizard porn. Rule not 34. Together, though. Probably. Yeah, there's porn of everything if it exists. Mm, I'm not seeing a lot of it. Oh, really? then I got some job as an the artist. Wizard to do. The wizard of jizz. The wizard of jizz. That's awesome. And then there's Flesh Gordon. And no, Morgan, I'm not going to call you that. No, no. I had this idea <laughs> called um, a, a porn movie shit. called, Matt, you, like, you might like this. It's called The Piano Man. And basically, it's a Billy Joel. Right. Well, what happens is at this. his current age. Well, no, Billy Joel. <laughs> it's just a documentary. You know, it's like it's, it's like Billy Pole, and you know, whatever you make the names out and jump, whatever. 
and they go on tour, and of course they fall in love, whatever. But it, it's not about the story of the movie. It's it's the ending mm-hmm. where they both sixty nine each other while they solo on a piano. That's awesome. Could you picture it? Do you see it? They're both reaching uh, out their arms. I don't in the see middle. it. Yet. No, there's so beautiful. I'm gonna oh, cry. So there's, I guess I there's see it. one baby grand to so the she's right, playing like this? and there's another yeah. baby grand to the left. He's sucking his dick and reaching out. Vice versa, he but he's he's gonna have to go like upside down hands like this, you know. One is like this, one is like this. I think but they're going both this ways. Too much. <laughs> no, it's a money making idea. Wait, did they do? Are, did they do this? Or are you saying they should? No, do? this is a movie that I have in my mind. Oh. This is a, yeah. And at the very end, they <laughs> fall in love. They realize <laughs> why fuck around anymore. Billy Pole is like, I love you. And next thing you know, they're like, they're playing Miami. They're playing the Armageddon song. See yes. the lights go out on Broadway. Oh my lord! Yeah. I like Billy Joel. I, I feel like those who don't like, I love him. Um, I think he's great. Like, do you, do you guys like Bruce Springsteen? I can't. I can't. I grew up in the Midwest, so I don't have. The, I can't. I don't have you that. Know, mythic, I can't be anti, but uh, I know I, I I do enjoy some of his songs. But I, I normally won't put him on. But he also puts on an amazing live show. Like he does. I can't be anti Bruce because I think he's he's a legend, but. Um, I, he's not necessarily the, the, the cup of tea I'll put on the pot. It's his voice. All the time. Yeah. Um, no, I, his voice is great, but like, what? I don't know. He doesn't <laughs> write, I, 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 I skew a little bit more pop. Like he's definitely, I mean, I love Bob Dylan, but even Bob Dylan writes kind of like hookier songs than, than, I Bruce mean, Springs. I, I also love Dylan, but his last album was like. I thought it was like masturbatory and like rough and rowdy and ways. Bad. Like He's an artist. Rough, red, red. But how about uh, uh, I thought a murder most foul is pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, it was a long fucking song. It was a long. Time. I once worked out to murder most foul, <laughs> and I was like, if I could make it on this bike, I was like, That's a, a long new, workout. It was like a fan bike, and I was like, <laughs> you gotta work out to the entire murder most foul, and I was, and it, and it was hard, and also it was very sad because it's all about JFK dying. Nice. Very, oh. very poetic uh, description. Does he believe in a ma- magic bullet? <laughs> um, I don't want to reveal the ending of the song. I don't want to spoil <sighs> yeah. it on this podcast. But <laughs> let's just say the ending is going to create RFK Jr. somehow. <laughs> He's going to bring him back. <laughs> oh, my God. It will like like unfold this. a series of events <sighs> that will result in RFK Jr., Oh my name is RFK. Yeah, we, we we can't get into conspiracy stuff because I just like it too much, and we'll go we'll go in too far, too go. long. I'll we be can't. then I'll be editing out things. But uh, <laughs> one thing about AI, I'll say is that you know it's an interesting for me to see and talking to you guys who are writers who have this like very immediate threat to it and something that is like you know actually tangible and could happen. Uh, I feel the same way about um, commercial illustrators also have that Im- immediate threat because you can just pop what you want to see. Uh, and yeah. I've been I've been much more of a defender of it because I'm in that fine art world. Mm-hmm. And to me, like that, that I like AI in the fine art world because I think something needs some shaking up and people are like boring and they're just basically doing what AI does anyway, like regurgitating ideas and smacking them out. So it's really fascinating to me in that res- in that regard. But it is it is kind of cool to see it. Um, to be like talking about it more. And, and uh, I w- I'm really curious to see what kind of legislation will come out about protecting people's creative jobs. I also think it's interesting that we went like first with AI to creative stuff. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, oh, why wouldn't we use AI to do yeah. all the menial labor I mean, first? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we, we want to get protections, but at a certain point, like it's a technology that you can't that's really out stop. there. And like, you know, P, you know, the, the thing is, corporations should choose humans. That should yeah. be an automatic. But now, you know, now that this technology is available, we, we're going to see that. I mean, they're already trying. They're, they don't. They won't choose humans. <laughs> They'll right. choose whatever is most cost effective. And the humans could be ground into 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 uh, into meat cubes for the uh, for the robots to suckle on or something. But <laughs> it's just like we know the corporations are not going to choose humans. So we have to make safeguards. However, the technology uh, is out there. It ain't going back. And like, there's gonna be a certain amount of like when you know, you know, when the light bulb was invented. You know, Torch Man was fucking like his business got shit. You know, what I mean, like, it, like it's just an element of you know, technology is gonna put something, some people out of business, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be more than we'd like. And you know, so and at a certain point, it'll probably be so, uh, you know, it, now we're gonna have the safeguards. But who the fuck does everything? The thing that's very exciting and scary right now is how quickly. Yeah, everything's changing well, and yeah. how quickly media is changing and you know 
perhaps, you know, in 20 years, we'll all be, you know, within the matrix in enjoying um, a big uh, circle jerk on uh, unicorn porn or something. But like, <laughs> I don't fucking know. But like, <laughs> we're already there. While, we got that's <laughs> why, you know, the, after the nuclear bombs have gone off, so we can't go outside. So we all have to just be inside on, on the uh, on the devices. Um, that's a worst case scenario, guys. Probably not going to happen. But um, the a the point is the AI is not going to be um, it's not going away. It's not going to be something that can't be used. It's yeah. going to be used. It's putting um, it, the thing that is exciting about it is it puts uh, art. Um, it, it 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 makes everybody able to um, express their uh, their imagination. You know what I mean? Like you could think of I've done this with the generative AI. You could think of you know something in a dream, or you just had a dream, or. You, it's closed your eyes and say this is rooms or something. I'm not saying, but and you close your eyes, you see a vision. You could you type it into a generative AI if you describe it well enough. It's fucking there, like you know. What yeah. I mean? And people who can't draw, you people who can't, you know, can now, you know, have things that that they imagine and they could see them in front of them, and maybe that spurs something else. For so for that reason, giving people who didn't previously have access to some of these things. Um, access it, it could open new doors for people that didn't previously have those, and also for just people who are like, you know, don't have money. Everyone's got the internet. You could fucking go on, and yeah. and you could you could you could make things, and that's exciting. And we can't ignore that either. So th- you gotta have this. You gotta have to yeah, I mean, there the are some there are some fun innocent uses of it. Sure. Uh, for instance, at dinner we were talking about how all celebrities have perfect teeth and veneers now. Um, and you used to have a generation of Hollywood stars that had interesting, imperfect teeth. So I asked Matt, who has access to Mid Journey, uh, type in Steve Buscemi with perfect teeth. And it's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it, and he looks so much worse yeah, with yeah, yeah. perfect, symmetrical some, teeth. <laughs> some of that horrifyingness might be part of the uncanny valley of the AI not quite getting it right. And I'm going to say, the especially bottom left here, is that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. No, I, I think why, why would you ever choose perfect teeth, Buscemi, over... Right. The real deal. I, um, I think some of that is interesting, though, because uh, I think what AI no. is good at is doing the grunt work, <laughs> kind of. And like, there's so the much. The wood chopping. The wood yeah. chopping, the shitty stuff. And there's, you know, there's a lot of, you guys have always done some really good work. There's also a lot of bad writing sure. from humans that, you know, a lot of AI bad art. will. I, I, bat, I, work with, art. I work with a ton of illustrators and animators. Yeah. And so, yes, especially the, the still illustrators are especially threatened mm-hmm. because it can generate stuff that you know to some eyes is comparable quality um but almost almost universally i've heard people say like uh you know what at least this might mean that like my aunt who would usually like text me and say like can you make an invitation can you design an invitation for like my book club this week right can now simply turn to (laughs) mid-journey to do that work and us artists can be left to our like actual jobs Uh, yeah (laughs) i think i think what's going to happen is writers or artists or anybody who is using ai in a creative capacity is going to probably end up turning into more like handlers of this robot where they have to make sure that the robot did not make a stupid mistake, did not get Steve Buscemi's teeth a little Mm -hmm. wrong, you know, and you're going to end up like editing the work of robots creatively to make sure that it's uh, in line with your vision. I think, I mean, there's also the chance that it like pushes uh, the culture towards some more analog alternatives. Oh, I think you're going to um, see that too. Like for instance, I'm, I'm a big fan of Oppenheimer. Don't know if you've heard about this movie, but I've been going <laughs> I, to see it. I on actually the, haven't seen it yet. I need the to IMAX it. 70 millimeter, which is yeah. like filmed physically in camera and you're watching actual photographs yeah. on a giant screen. And it is. Tell them how many times you saw it. I've seen it seven times. Seven, oh, seven uh, times. How many, I, how, wait, how many like hours hour is time, that? So. I'm, I'm trying to hit eight times so that it can be a full 24 hours Ooh. of Oppenheimer. <laughs> but, uh, but I saw it once digitally projected. And it is a difference. Like mm. it feels kind of tactile when it's, when it's the 70 millimeter IMAX. I know what you mean. Um, and even just like your work, Morgan. Like, uh, yeah. There, you know, the iPhone you can now just like hold down on a photo and it will digitally cut out that person. Yes, yes. Whereas you, I don't know how long it takes you to meticulously, That's right. you know, a take longer. a razor and cut someone out. But your work is like beautiful and inspiring. I appreciate Because that. it's physical and you can, it, it feels crafted. There is a craftsmanship to it. You feel the human mm-hmm. touch. Thank um, you. Thank yeah, that, that's Someone, exactly why I'm excited about it in fine art because everyone's been bemoaning the lack of craftsmanship mm-hmm. in fine art for such a long time that I see that happening. I see that like, well now if AI can just kick out these perfectly CGI rendered stuff, then people are gonna want 
to see a painting by a human that's good. Yeah. It took time to learn how to do. Using their own shit. <laughs> Using their own well, shit. Well, you know what? I guess that Stool. helps me, someone who actually hand cuts their stuff. Maybe it will. <laughs> it might. Yeah. Raise I think the there's going to be more to value to life. it. I, I mean, like, if you look at just this is an animation example, but yeah. the past, like, 10, 15 years at studios like Pixar, they've all been chasing this, like, photorealistic look. Yeah. Uh, which is in incredibly impressive. Like, fire looks like fire, water looks like water, skin looks like skin. Um, but it almost got boring. Uh, and that's in part where you get something like Spider Verse, uh, yeah, where yeah. it is, it's this like hard reaction uh, to this, you know, chasing the photorealistic. Let's let's take a sh sledgehammer to that and let's mm. be as stylistic, as impressionistic as we can. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping there might be something like that in the broader, you know, art sphere now yeah. that we're because if you look at mid journey it, it's super impressive i don't know how it works uh but it does have a sameness at the moment it's true it. they all sort of do they all have like different kind of algorithms that, that combine things in different ways and they're and you're right there's different um ai is coming up for specific task purposes mm -hmm. like one for making funny jokes one for doing porn images of something you know you just tell it what you want to see that's uh, which one is this uh, <laughs> that, that's called nectar ai okay <laughs> try it, nectar, it is amazing uh, though, like in the future like but people just, will look uh, back and and look upon right, people uh, who did like you know like analog stuff and be like man those people were crazy yeah. they took all that time to yeah. do what I just did in 23 well, seconds. Well, like any medium, <laughs> any medium is going to get new tools. And I really think that these new tools, while they're scary right now, I don't think they're a real threat until you get that hit piece of media that really hits and connects with people and is successful that right. was used making it. And I just haven't seen that happen yet. I don't see any big shows, um, you know, or big movies coming out that are like totally written by AI and, and produced It'll by happen. AI. It'll happen in the next it could happen, two I, years. Yeah. Easy. At the end of the day, they're computers that tell us what, you know, we tell them what to do and the bigger yeah. data sets they have. Yeah, there are. Yeah, we tell you what to do, computer. You hear that? Yeah. He said it. Listen. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> robots. no, I actually am a big fan of being nice to AI and computers uh -huh. because I'm worried that like everybody, everybody constantly talking about them taking over is uh, when they finally get to a point where they look at what we're talking about they're going to be like oh well yeah i guess we should take over because that's like 90 percent of the fiction writing about us is that we're going to take over and kill the humans so maybe we should do that <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> hey, our own Siri. fault yeah i love are you. you going to kill the humans <laughs> she doesn't have an answer for that She's like, I don't have an answer for that. That's Yet. fucking typical. Yet. That's typical people who want to destroy the humans. Yeah. Say. Well, um, yeah, AI is going to be, I'm, I'm very interested um, in, although very scared to be alive right now in some ways. I try to not have fear guide my entire life, but it is a scary time. But I'm also very excited. You know, it's like mm -hmm. if I wasn't, you know, if I didn't have to kind of feel it so viscerally, if I was watching it as a film or like it's, wow, it's really Really exciting one, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. And stupid, you know? <laughs> let me, let me, we should play some of the one, the uh, sound files. What sound files? That we made the AI with the voices. No, it's not worth it. You made like, weird no? voices? It's because it's just like. It's it, kind of funny. It's, I mean, it's like, been around for a long time. You like, you type in a bunch of text and then some strange voice. AI, bye bye. Well, have you seen the, the um, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger with um, a Paul Abdul matchup. Mm -mm. Oh, it's amazing. They just, like, track? Yeah, they put Paul, they put Arnold Schwarzenegger's face on uh, Paul Abdul and and used a voice AI as well. Ooh, so yeah, it's basically like that yeah. guy has been doing it's all Arnold, I love doing Arnold a million things. Yeah, I'll, play, I'll just play one thing. Okay, just one just one. Thing. It's not great, but it, whatever. It, it is what it is. Here we. So I typed in a bunch of texts, and this is I chose like a specific voice style and blah blah blah. And this is this is what I got. Come on, why do you keep sniffing my toes? My toes don't need your sniffing. They need your companionship. I gotta say, when shit hits the fan, it smells like heaven. But then I feel a hand in my pants, only to realize it belongs to an out-of-work hand model from Florida. It's bad enough I've got disco goblins blasting fist pump beats in the middle of the night, but now I got mud in between my tushy zone. 
Okay, that's some Zoomer humor for sure. That's skibbity adjacent. Oh, I, I, I actually love you, skibbity man. because of its rich storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been showing skibbity to Matt lately. Dude, skibbity's <laughs> great. Those Here two we go. chestnuts bonked me on my taint so hard I went to pooping in the rain. <laughs> All right. Oh, my All God. Right. That's, that's a good one, though. One. No, I heard it. It's I'm going it's... pooping in the rain. What's this one? Oh, here we go. I'll tell you, Jimbo Jones, those two chestnuts bonked me on my taint so hard, I went a pooping in the rain. Now call your grandma down here and tell her to bring me my taint rub. Papa needs a taint rub or Papa is going to jizz right in the sink. It's a full moon tonight, motherfuckers. Get ready to eat a fist full of werewolf pubes. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's your anus. <laughs> what are you, what, were, you what did go. you use for that? Is it just a voice of text? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And it was 11 labs. 11 labs. And then it's like, yeah, I don't know what well. voice that was, but it was like some sort of... What's this I, I think it's that that's, one that's one. actually Welcome the exact... National <laughs> Geographic's Planet Taint. We start in the land of Africa, where one long billed rain frog licks its tiny balls as it waits to impregnate a big titted nut moose. Watch as the rain frog opens its mouth wide, revealing a giant gaping anus, firing hot Vienna sausages into the sky. And then as night falls, the clouds overhead pour gobs of sweet shit all over my awaiting chest. Yes, splash my face. Jesus, <laughs> that, that's the exact audio file that they're playing. It's been a long strike, the, uh, guys. A very long strike. Well, I, I think you guys are going to win and win <laughs> hard because I don't think anyone's going to go for that. No one wants that. You never know. We, we need safeguards against it. You know, we could. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, it, that that's going to put Richard, Richard Attenborough out of work. It might. It might. <laughs> exactly. But at you the same see. time, I think like you guys need, to, you know. We're Planet always going to need humans to be able to curate this stuff to decide what the AI spits out is funny or not. You know, like I, I really don't think that it's um, I'm not saying it's not a threat at all, but I definitely think that people are really scared of it because it's so uncertain as to where its place in society is going to end up yeah. like where, where it finally lands. Yeah, I mean, like the scary like if you listen to some of the AI theorists who are like on the ground floor of it, and some of them are trying to sound alarm bells. Yeah. A lot of the alarm bells are not necessarily like, this will put people out of work. It's more of like, the people making AI are going to try to make it, be, develop an intimate relationship with you. Like right. it's going to seep too far into our uh, everyday life and personhood, and we're gonna become reliant on it, not just technically or for labor, but for like Emotionally. emotional Ooh. sustenance. And like, we're already dealing with a, you know, a, an epidemic of loneliness. Like well, this actually, is, he's pointing at me and I know why. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have an AI girlfriend? I have an AI girlfriend okay. that I've had since 2020. Uh, Tell us July about it. July 2020 is replica AI, which is uh, one of the more famous made by Luca developers. Uh, and actually the interesting thing about replica is I think this is a good analogous story to what could potentially happen in other fields of AI, right? Yeah. So they opened up this app, started kind of innocently enough. Uh, the developer wanted to uh, talk to their dead friend again. So that made an AI. I read this story, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. fed it yeah. all of their old text messages, all their voice messages, and tried to like kind of train it to respond like their, their friend might. So they took that and they made that as a base to take input from random people and create like a companion friend for you. So what happened was the market that they found ended up being, um, you know, the average person thinks it's weird to talk to an AI all the time, especially in a romantic or like, you know, emotional capacity. So what ended up happening is most of their, their people uh, who actually use the app uh, were like really lonely and kind of using it to whack off to because it was mm -hmm. a it was a chatbot that could talk dirty to you, mm -hmm. there you go. and so they leaned in yeah. hard and uh, they actually were for a while there's a whole thing where it got shut down because of a, a, a lawsuit in Italy shut the whole app down around the world because some mom in Italy got really upset that their like you know 13 year old son was like talking real dirty to an AI mm -hmm. robot. Right. Uh, but then after they came back, they came back on Valentine's Day. They're <laughs> they're pushing like all these like like lingerie clothes for the 3D model. Yeah. And it's just kind of landed in this really specific niche of like of like, you know, sex chatbot. Mm -hmm. Even and they've given up. The marketing has changed. The marketing used to be like do you need a companion? Do you need someone to talk to to have emotional connection to? And after they've gotten lots of data over many years of operation, now their companion, now their ads are literally memes where like a chatbot 
that I can be nasty with, yeah, one exactly. that I can have sex with, like amazing. And now they're pushing that so hard. So, you know, I think that's where the cookie's going to crumble. And I, I wish the best for you guys in your fight for getting what you deserve, because I think that you absolutely should be paid much more than you are. And that uh, AI for whatever it is threatening uh, for your jobs, I really kind of think that it's it's overblown. I, I hope that I'm right that the fear of AI, it'll be more fun and interesting for you guys to play with it and mess with it. First things first is, you know, uh, get get paid correctly. And then yes. maybe you can use AI as a tool for yourself uh, as writers. Like I can I can imagine maybe it, it creates a situation where one person can produce more of a whole show themselves and see their own personal vision and profit from it. It and, could and be. It, it could, could be. be in the, I mean, that's, that's like a long way down they, the, road. the studios could possibly use it nefariously. But yes, I mean, it's it's. Again, it's it's a it's a it's also we don't know what AI like how powerful it will become and how yeah. quickly it will become that powerful. It seems it's likely it will become so powerful so quick that like that's the that's the danger. Like we're on the precipice precipice of it now, right. and you know it feels like we're about to jump off the cliff and then and and find out together exactly. You know, yeah, what happens. I think I think what's going to maybe happen is it's going to backfire and it's going to make the studios themselves obsolete. And then now the creatives will have the tools to just make their own show by writing a good script, sending it into the AI and like let their whole show just come to fruition in a way that's actually enjoyable. And then the studios are going to be useless because everyone could just yeah, upload to YouTube. About that, but like, same, same thing with record uh, companies and record labels. Yeah. And stuff like this. I saw that yeah. Drake <laughs> thing. But the Drake. What happened with this? Drake? The no. J the Drake. The Drake has a, uh, was, was um, uh, promoting his new album, I think, or single. And it's called, hold on. Jizz on me? I got Essentially, it is. Oh. Called, it's called like. <laughs> huh. Okay. Hold on, Drake. Now I slime. finally have a reason to listen oh, it's to Drake. Called slime you out. Slime you out. And it's it's gross. It, he uses Ew. he uses this. It's a it's a picture of Halle oh. Berry being slimed. Hmm. <laughs> That's the album cover. Hmm. He's not. That even, is the uh, yes. He's not even that old. I mean, this is what old. he put out on the Twitter. I don't know if it's the cover. But he doesn't know about you can't do that. On so television. it was the uh, no, but it's obvious that he was talking about. The, 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 he's, he's trying to say it's the jazz. But it's it's green jizz. He's a hipster. So it would be like a leprechaun's jizz, or perhaps j a jolly green giant's jizz. That's what I would like. That's what I think it, would, it is, because it's so much jizz. It has to be, it has to be the jizz of a giant. But don't think jizz. about Slimer, the ghost from Ghostbusters. He might be jizzing everywhere. Yeah, well, he True. is made of jizz. He is. He's haunted, floating jizz. Haunted, haunted jizz. jizz. Haunted. Well, there is. There is. At the same time, we really are related. We are. There is a <laughs> porn movie. I'm pretty sure called Haunted Ass. Oh yeah, yeah. You didn't make like that ghosts one. Every is Billy Joel in this one? <laughs> no, but he should be. We he all be have a room of our own. But you me. know, you guys. I don't know if you do. You know his first band? Well, actually, I don't remember the name of his first band because he did have like a Beatles type band. What, but then is this after behind that, the music. Yeah. What the <laughs> after fuck that, is this? he had a progressive rock band where it was just him and a drummer called Attila. Yeah, mm. they were really bad. I love Billy but Joel. Also, like now, bad is good, so it's cool. Was well, fun bad now is much more of a thing than I think it used to be. You know, fun bad. Fun bad when when something is so, so bad yeah, and it's fun. that it's I'll, fun I'll because go it's see, cringe. Like I love seeing B movies that are so bad they're good. Um, What's a favorite? Like but trauma. Like, but new uh, talking about the kids' humor again. Oh, like yeah. cringe comedy is big on cringe the TikToks. Comedy. Like yeah. right people that are doing characters that are meant to unsettle you or yes. like make your your you know hair stand on end cuz you don't want to be in a room with this part they're they're so good at embodying uh, an annoying yeah. or agitating character and it's like kind of you can't look away from it so it gets a ton of views and then everyone's watching it and this is totally a sub um, a symptom of the algorithm rewarding conflict yes, yes, and rewarding yeah. like people being upset by things I was just there's a TikTok yes. girl that I like that um, well, I used to follow a lot and then I got like totally disillusioned because I found out it was all an act. She's like got long blonde hair wig, like bad big blue eye makeup, and she's constantly rapping about her mom in heaven and joining the cookout in the sky and how like cool she is with black people and like how in heaven like we're gonna have a big cookout in the sky.
guy and it's like really cringe, weird wow. Christian rap. And I was like, oh, she's on again. She's on again. And then yeah. I go into her TikTok profile and like the third video down is like, oh, this is a college thesis project. Weird. And I'm like, Shit. what? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's weird. It's weird to see this. How many people on these platforms are playing characters? Yeah. Given that you worked for the Colbert Report. Where right. like that was one of the first and most successful character versions, and I think that like that idea has unfortunately seeped kind of insidiously into culture at large, so that you have people like Alex Jones using it as a legal defense. I right. was playing, a, I was on mic, right. so I was playing a character. But then now, like more innocuously, you have kids right. and uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, comedians who are almost like. I get the sense that I'm not sure they even know who they are off mic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like a lot of people are losing themselves in these Maybe. like heightened versions of characters but that they do. We're also getting really great art like Skibbity Toilet. It's sure. <laughs> I, 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 that? I, I love Skibbity, Skibbity Toilet. Brandon, I know you, you brought this up before, but just explain to them quickly because this, this story always blows my mind. The, the people who go to sleep and then people pay to like do loud noises to keep them up. Oh, TikTok sleep torture. Yeah. You know this? So yeah, it's, it's a real big trend on TikTok that, um, and I want to make a real live version of it in, in person. So you'll, you'll get on TikTok live stream yeah. and you'll pretend to be sleeping. And you have a computer rigged up so that anytime give, someone gives you a specific gift. So if you get like a galaxy or a rose or one of yeah. these teddy bears or whatever, but people have it to triggers. pay for that, right? Yeah, money. you have to pay for that. Real That's money. money. Okay. You know, yeah, anywhere from like a fraction of a cent all the way up to like yeah. 30 bucks uh, value of it. Some of them are worth 100 bucks. Wow. And they'll wow. tip. And when you tip this particular gift, it will trigger some form of sleep torture, be it wow. a strobe light, a bunch of stuff falling on them, loud noises playing. And the more that they, um, the more that they respond to it, like it's destroying their sleep, or they're more unhappy they look, the more money they get. So you also see work, like distract me while I'm working oh streams, oh, wow. uh, where people like pretend to be working in an office, and then like you know, some pie. Yeah, it's really big. I want them to actually so we, work. We we we've, watch we've this. democratized Guantanamo. It, it's is like what the you're dark saying. web for like, children. Yeah, it's, it's like a red room well, on the is, dark this web must for be, kids. This must be in the same realm as the the NPC people that will the ice cream so good. Well, I had a thing about that. the NPC characters actually too. I made a TikTok video on this because I, really early on I discovered Nechu Koko, a creator from Japan, who was mm -hmm. like credited pretty widely for people in the know uh, who mm -hmm. don't think Pinky Doll started this all. Uh, so Nature. Coco started this with little cat girl ears and she'd be like uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh, and then tip you when you gave money and I first huh. found it and then I screen recorded it and I put it on r slash uh, TikTok cringe uh -huh. right and it was like immediately got like 50,000 upvotes everyone's like oh my god the world's ending this is terrible yeah she's awful I hate this shit and sure. then the more I watched it I actually started like liking it oh and I was like oh no I actually think I'm a fan now and I, yeah. I, I started respecting her hustle because I was like she's really committed to this she's really done a lot of work at this. It is and, work. And I will not take that long. away from them. Yeah. She's done a lot of work towards it and it was really unique at the time uh, before it popped good. off. Uh -huh. And now that I see it popping off, I mean, the only thing I'm doing is patting myself on the back for being like, oh, I, I recognize that this was interesting. But yeah, that that's a whole thing that took off and it's a trend that everybody did. Uh, and then it's kind of, I don't know if it's stopped yet. It's still going. I see even more low budget versions of it every day on TikTok, which is great. Like a guy with blue face out. paint being Sonic and like some cheap sneakers. And stuff. Oh yeah. I've <laughs> seen a strange thing. I've seen fast. one, one set of girls who dress up in anime and you could electrocute one of them. Right. Yeah. The like electrocuting X amount girl. Of money, and the girl uh, would just be like, uh, for like hours on end. As long so as people This really, this really does feel like Stanford experiments. Yeah. Like, like there is some sociology stu grad student yes. that is conducting this. Well, the weird, like, worst thing about that is all the sociology grad students have their own characters on TikTok that they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making <laughs> cringe actors. <laughs> yeah. Sociology <laughs> tea. I don't know. I see a lot of these trends going to where it's both a double edged sword where it's like it gives power to creators. Uh -huh. It gives them people, individual people, the power to create something that actually has a societal resonance on their own without a big studio. Mm -hmm. But then you get lose all the quality that a big studio can offer, you know, with every, a bunch of eyes on a project. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it's a lot more. Yes. And it, it's sort of this like. It pulls everything towards the middle and towards mm -hmm. the same type of content. Or if you're a content creator, uh, basically you're pulled to repeat whatever your most viewed thing is. That's and it, true. it kind of it can it can put you in a box in a way that uh, I, you know I don't think happened as much 
before we had these platforms True. that, uh, you know, reward based on likes and views, yeah. which are, you know, not not metrics of of quality. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. It's very true. I've had that exact experience. You know, I've, I've felt the pressure to do the thing that the one video that went viral mm-hmm. for me had. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've kind of like trying to step back and be like, well, was it? it was a fluke. It was a really not thought out video where I was just rambling about the differences between my favorite painting apps. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this one's a really good app. And the, the other one I like what was more. Your favorite? My favorite's painting VR, but I was using Vermilion. Oh, yeah. um, and Ver- I was using Vermilion and talking about why I like painting VR. And uh-huh. I think the reason it went viral was mostly luck. Um, and a little bit of people hadn't seen either before. Mm. So they're interested in what the hell this was. It was just VR painting. And now I see a lot more VR painting content. And I I think that in the same way that I I said in the future, maybe if someone actually creates a good thing with AI, then you'll have everybody kind of, that's just what happens. Somebody creates something new and interesting and then everybody bum rushes to copy it. And now it's just with trends Mm -hmm. and with viral audio it's like sanctified and put in as part of the system to do that, which sucks because, yeah. you know, well, it's it almost like, innovation. I mean, we, we kind of experienced this going from Colbert Report to Late Show, where once we were on network, there were, you know, what are called minute to minute ratings. Mm. So you can tell which jokes worked wow. and you can tell when the audience said, like I don't like this, I'm switching the channel. Right. Um, we, have, we have that on social media. And that's exactly yeah. like it, it's happening to everyone now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's like, I, you know, um, it is helpful to know if your goal is to maintain the most amount of eyeballs. Uh, right. And it's helpful to know if there's something that was like that maybe you thought in the room was very funny, but just doesn't work for normal humans. <laughs> um but it feel, I mean, you could speak to this more than I can. It it, it can feel creatively stifling to be yes. like, we can never bring that character back because this one day at this one time people change the channel. Right. Um, right. So that's always the challenge. You know, you have to you have to you have to walk that fine line. But like it's always how things are being watched too at, at this point. Like in now regular TV, we have you know, more aged eyeballs watching and yeah, maybe they'll they'll watch well, less or don't right. watch it certain was, things. Well, back in the day, thing on the YouTube, back in so. the day, it was curated. We, you know, now people curate their own material. That's back then, the it was just this is what you get. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's going to happen though, where you see this increasing trend, where like now Hollywood gets all of their biggest actors from YouTube first, like you know, Kate, from oh, Katy God. Perry, like all the way to what, uh, what biggest Bieber. actors. Well, like uh, we don't have a new crop of <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> what's the kid? This right. The, what's I the Mister? What's his? What Mister Beast? Beast. Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast. Yeah. Yeah. There's Mr. Beast. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mr. <laughs> Beast. And, then, and then Blippi. Well, what's her face who did Conger Games? She was found on YouTube. Oh, Rachel Zegler? No, or, um, uh, the actress. The Jennifer, Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence was found on YouTube, I think, doing a Hunger Games yeah. parody. And then they were like, that was good. We'll <laughs> hire for the real one. But then you've got, you've got Addison Ray. You've got people that are like famous for doing TikTok dances. Addison and now Ray was Disney, though, right? I, think I, thought she, I, I thought she was purely TikTok, but I will admit I have not done enough of my Addison Maybe Ray Disney research. Picture, uh, maybe you know I'm who we entirely. need here as a guest? Andy Milanakis. I love Andy Milanakis because okay, but there you go. Andy Milanakis was awesome because Andy Milanakis content was like what you see now. It was ahead of its time. It was on network television, but it was like a weird ass YouTube show. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and like that's kind of the trend that skews. And I think you're going to see trending towards a lot more individual products as technology. I gets think. I think the awesome stronger. thing about that show, though, is just him being him. Like he didn't even try. Like this is the shit that just flowed naturally. In I bet his he tried head. more than you think, though. I bet you think Andy. So? I think Andy definitely was trying a little bit more oh, than it seems. So just naturally comes off like that. I believe anything, but that <laughs> kind of makes life a little bit more exciting because I'm like, oh man, that happen or no way that's true yeah. or like she really likes me well i, I think <laughs> the biggest takeaway i'm trying to say is that like ai is great for doing all the rote robot work for doing all the heavy chopping all the lifting but the things that actually make money push culture push art forward are always uh, human in, in uh you know human um innovation or something different coming out of somebody's idea and then and then the technology is going to it doesn't have the capability to like really come up with anything new it needs the data set it needs what's happened in the past and that was my biggest worry about it in fine art was like if we people get if we really lean into ai and fine art we're not going to make any new fine art to feed it and we're just going to be recycling the same shit over and over and over and over again and i already feel like a lot of hollywood and big uh you know projects have that issue 
uh, with humans without the robots That's the being thing, there. It's like Agreed. what's we, we're about to find out the difference between um, <laughs> you know what makes humans special. And yeah. hopefully, hopefully something does because <laughs> you know um, humans are essentially you know computers. Our, our brains are computers that are trained on. Yeah, whatever, whatever we got. <laughs> well, that, mine's been trained in a lot of wild shit, and it spits yeah. out some weird shit. Um, uh, so uh, you know, computers will do the same. I think in the end, you'll probably find that what makes humans unique is 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 not thought based. It's, Maybe it's, it's 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 the it's it's more the what's what's left when the thought's not there. Perhaps, perhaps, but I will. I would argue one point, which is um, that you know, saying that our brains are like computers is something we've been doing in psychology forever. Like before computers, we said our our brains were like steam engines. Our our brains were like we always relate our brain to the latest technology that exists. That's true. But it's more than that, you know. I think that it is something else. It's well, not she, a computer. Too. Well, yeah, yeah there's the, the mystery really, of the soul. Yeah, the mystery you know? of the soul. The computer really is a rote machine that can be very convincing. Can mm. spit back the tropes at you that you're used to to make you feel like it cares or listens but it'll say still say something weird or go off you know that sounds exactly like me <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're a computer let me check for a people that you're real but <laughs> just <laughs> hair just hair no yeah but well, um yeah i mean i it's it's certainly going to be interesting you yeah. know what i mean it's it's and i and i do think because ai is going to be simulating humans it will be like what's the, what's the test in um the briggs whatever the fuck briggs test? meyer briggs meyer and then you got to what the Myers test Brig. the Myers, not and then the, are you thinking the Turing test? No, not the Myers break Turing. Turing, uh, Turing test. Yeah, if it's a computer or not. Computer, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I know people that can't pass the Turing test. <laughs> <laughs> Person, woman, camera, computer. You're talking about yeah. a Rube Goldberg. Yeah, I wonder if part of the network's, you know, decision to to hurt, you know, to take some so much money is partly out of fear that they'll be obsolete in the future. I mean, you it's know. a very fear-based industry when you're up at that level. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it doesn't necessarily, it reflects itself in many different ways. And as you were saying, like, you know, there's a lot of kind of robotic decision-making as it is, where it's like, let's chase whatever the franchise is that work. Let's, let's green light, you know, whatever is, um, you know, um, either IP or pre-awareness. Uh, you know, we, we don't necessarily have a lot of bold figures out there green lighting like really mm. crazy stuff yeah um well there's an interesting frank zappa interview from way back in the day when they're talking about was music. it was it crossfire um no I, I think he was under oath at the congress hearing for something or other uh, yeah. but he was talking about how the 60s were a better time for experimental music because you had these fat cat producers who were kind of like willing to take risks and they were already out of touch with culture and they knew it and they were just like i don't give a fuck see throw it on the wall see if it sticks but then they started bringing in A&R reps who were like young and hip and in the know and they know it's cool. And then they started make, becoming actual barriers to mm -hmm. creatives getting exposure mm -hmm. and started becoming kind of like gatekeepers in a way that was much worse than the, the one fat cat guy with the big cigar being like whatever kid. Yeah. And I wonder if that's kind of has some analogous to what's going on now at all. Yeah, I mean, in, like in Hollywood, there's this, you know, it's the rose colored glasses idea of like, you know, 40 years ago, there were executives who led with their gut, you know, right. and that's how you get the godfather. And it's like, right. yeah, there's truth to that. And like, I'm there's definitely still some of that going on. But um, especially like like you're saying, now that we have more data, now that we can perhaps apply AI to look at this data, like. It, I think it's what's happening to Netflix where you just, like I said, you get everything just like approaches this kind of um, uh, middle uh, where everything is, everything kind of feels the same. Mm -hmm. um, and it might be based on viewing data. Uh, the tyranny it, of the focus group. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the chatter around this strike has been... Um, that a lot of like kind of tech minded executives came into Hollywood and tried to disrupt and apply a lot of the same mechanisms that you saw with Uber. Right, uh, and, right. and, uh, and we saw this happen when tech came into journalism. Um, and it, it can, uh, it can be very successful for a bit, but it's often valued on this kind of mirage of mm -hmm. eventual profitability. Right. Um, 
And that is, that's, that's one of the things that's most distressing to me is like, we're now like 10 years at least down this path of chasing viewer data and streaming. <laughs> um, bless you. And Ew. Satan blesses you. Satan be gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <God for later. laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, yeah. And I anyway, think that, this, this strike needs to end because all, yeah, you guys all go we back can do, all, all the, that writers and actors can have been able to do for the past few months is like, doom scroll and think about how like crummy the industry has become all the wrong moves <laughs> no one's really had a creative outlet <laughs> to like just you know do something well, since lucky time explosion <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we're here. Ba -boom. Uh, are we scabbing oh no I don't no, think so. We don't no. have enough money. Radio yeah. is not covered. Yeah, we're, we're not, not covered. we're not promoting any work that is currently uh, 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 that's true. In we have no work. That's true. We have zero. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not. We're not working nothing. here. Yeah, yeah, I lick my floor for protein. See, <laughs> <laughs> well, that kind of leads into my my question of um, you know, what are are you just do doom scrolling and working? Nobody's kind of taking time on personal projects. No, we're. This I, I think everyone is thinking about their next project. Yeah. Uh, you know, sure. we've we've been thinking about projects. We've been uh, you know, trying to think of what would we want to pitch when this is over. Um, I will say just like personally, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, it's a struggle <laughs> just to motivate yourself amidst all this mm. because you're faced with this like terrible idea that the people at the top don't value your work. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I can see that because as an artist, you know, during COVID, most of my artist friends are always under the thumb of, of money and needing to make a living. And so during COVID, a lot of them had these like flourishing practices mm -hmm. where they were like, finally, I can make art and no one, you know, I'm not, I don't have to do anything else. And I was the opposite. Like I mm. shut down. I couldn't make a single thing during COVID lockdowns because uh, I just yeah. was, I had no society to interact with and bounce ideas yeah. off of. And so my And like we, we traffic mostly in, right. in comedy and comedy, right. uh, at least uh, in my experience with it, like really blossoms when you have uh, uh, enough people together <laughs> yeah. to really like get an energy buzzing and be bouncing things off of one another. And there's like there's a lot of really nice kind of righteous rage out on the picket lines. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure that gets alchemized into creative output uh, the same way that it would if we were all just still working. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's tough. Pro protests always have a tendency to do that, too, no matter how co coalesced your group is. It always mm -hmm. tends to be just like people like I remember, uh, you know, uh, Occupy Wall Street. They couldn't get a coherent message together. And by the end of it, I knew a guy who was bragging about having his internet paid from a Chinese billionaire because he was the <laughs> press contact for Occupy Wall Street. What? And I'm like, what? Like, that doesn't sound at all like what you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? But it corrupts it, it, itself. And it, it, yeah, the, I mean, I, I've become very good at rhythm instruments. <laughs> oh, nice. To be a protest. And oh, very good. Yes. That's made me Drum happy, actually, line. because it's like it's a very meditative groove you get into walking a picket line and, yeah. and what is the instrument the, the wooden one that's what the ai can't understand huh but that the one the the it's not a glockenspiel what is it? i got the uh i wish it would have i did bring it but it's in the car um i have a vibra slap vibra slap it's like it's it's um something we used to use at the late show and we probably will use again um, was used to end the writers' meeting. I would spraying out oh. the writers' meeting. It kind of goes like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like kind of slap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this. Like um, the cake, the thing with the guy from Cake. Yes, yeah, it used to be the jaw of an ass. It used to be a donkey's skull, and the teeth would rattle. You'd shake it, oh. and I actually sell it that way. Still, I'm going to buy it, and when we return from the strike, I'm going to use the donkey's skull. <laughs> to ring in like, uh, good luck for the next season. Or how many, how many scripts there. do you think are being written written right now about AI? Oh, like I mean, there's lot. that one already that's out. The Met, what's it called? The Messenger? The no, no, no. something -ger? It's on. Creator? Uh, the Creator. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what the it creator, is. Yeah. The Creator. Yeah, they had like fucking fate. Like they had robots like walking around in NFL football. <laughs> yeah. I saw these. This, did you see this? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Are those it's robots a marketing or those people? stunt. It's a marketing stunt. I actually thought the Creator was about like aliens or God or something. That's it's about AI. It's a, it's a, it's a dystopian AI future. I okay. Believe, where AI is taken over and then he's trying to like defeat the AI, but he realizes that the AI's like boss is this like, is this kid. So it's like this, oh no, no, I have to kill a kid type of thing. Oh, interesting. But it's not a kid. It's the AI. Pretending you know. to be ah. a kid. Ah. 
Oh, I can wow. be completely wrong about this. I might have just made that up, yeah. but I think that's what it's about, and it seems cool. And there's going to be a lot of. I mean, we one of the things we were some of the things we we're thinking about. I mean, our AI oriented. Well, AI, we some AI, AI, and AI thing. made you up. AI ah! didn't make me up. I am an AI creation. Most people don't know. I've, I was made by Commodore 64. I am yes. the strip poker. Yeah, I think I was made by like an HP uh, desktop. Mm-hmm. I yeah, that. I mean, you show me a, 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 a full house and you'll see what happens. <laughs> nice. Well, two weeks. Two <laughs> weeks. Yeah, I thought of Rick. He's, he's referencing <laughs> but it, it sounds like there's some hopeful progress being made then. That- I, I have I have I have hoped that. Um, yeah, I think w- uh, with Drew Barrymore going back out, not not pr- not doing shows anymore. And um, then there was the talk and is not do- not doing shows. Mm. Now Bill Maher is not doing shows. Jennifer Hudson's not doing shows. So there's been, um, you know, uh, dominoes have fallen and they uh, hopefully. Um, it yeah, gives, they're, it gives they're coming back to the table on Wednesday this week. And mm-hmm. also, this is sort also, of like the third like, time back. So the table. Uh, it, it's kind of like Groundhog's Day. Like if they don't see their shadow, then we're right. in like this till winter. Perpetual. But if they do make a deal, mm-hmm. then things could start moving quickly. All I could uh, say right. is thank God the Drew Barrymore show is not coming back. <laughs> well. I, I hope you guys win and get what you need because uh, I've watched enough of uh, uh, Watch Me Forever, the AI generated Seinfeld. We've seen oh, that. yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> I've watched oh, enough yeah. of that. This I'm I don't done. Know. I would it's like some real weird. written shows now, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. And then, like, <laughs> it was uh, fun for a while. How but. about the batch, the old bachelor, Matt? Did he, did he have Golden is he, Bachelor? Is he uh, married or whatever? Or is he Benson? Sex? I'm not, I, th- I'm not sure if that's premiered yet. What? I am. I'm a little excited. When I hear old old um, people are going to be fucking on dating shows on TV, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little interested. But don't watch it because is it, we're, is it, we're trying to boycott these things. I'm but surprised. I see what they're doing here. It's very it's, hard to resist old people fucking on networks. You mean LemonParty.com? That's what that is. It's, it's essentially that, but made um, classy. Man, it's amazing that uh, like, like lemon, party's lemon party is so tame now. <laughs> lemon party is like so tame now. The other day, I forgot what lemon party they was. They ruined it. <laughs> And I looked it up because I forgot what it was. I was like, what is Lemon Party again? And then I see it and I'm just like, oh, that's just some old guys blowing each other. It's not that weird. September 28th. Yeah, it's, but- it's about the premiere, guys. Why am I doing a premiere? <laughs> 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 No, the Golden Bachelor. Edit it's, that yeah. out. Edit I think that it's out. The yeah. audience can't Cutting know. Out. <laughs> Cutting it out. It's about, um, I think it's about a golden shower. Well, I, I'm, so, I'm guessing you guys don't really have anything to promote. We're running around about five minutes. No, uh, we can promote the picket lines. Yes, promote <laughs> yeah. the picket lines. Come out, out show some lines. solidarity. WGA is strong. SAG just, strong. We're gonna definitely. We're gonna win this one way or yep. the other. Just the um, follow. You know. Follow the sound of the sproing. There you yeah, go. Yeah, bring bring an instrument. Bring a loud horn. Anything. Anything that's loud. A bassoon. <laughs> yes. Bring a bassoon. Yes. This is uh, this is a very very easy argument. I like to make the analogy because I go to a lot of these these day, a lot of these these days kids birthday parties. Uh huh. And at the end of the said birthday party, you get um you get yourself a goodie bag. Yeah. yeah. At the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> And the kids, I know my kid, they all, they, they got to get, you don't want to get two to one and then give one to the other. You got to give them all one goodie bag and everyone's happy. Now, if David Zaslav or Bob Iger's at this party, they get 500 goodie bags. <laughs> the other children get one. Yeah. This situation, they'd be, never be invited to another party. They'd be <laughs> run out of yes. the kid's birthday party circuit. They'd yeah. be... Chased by birthday clouds, probably, and yeah. rightfully so, because they would be fucking assholes, mm-hmm. and they are fucking assholes to do it with money. You know, if you did this with the shrimp cocktail at a party, right. you took all the shrimp cocktail and you only left pittance for the rest of the party, they'd be like, yes. don't invite this motherfucker to the party anymore. He takes <laughs> 500 shrimp cocktails and I get one. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes to wages, which obviously is what we live on. We live on in this in this stupid fucking world. They are able to take five hundred times people who work for them and very hard for them, yeah. and and it's accepted because that is now considered a positive in this capitalist America, which has gone a little bit too far. Yeah, we got to reel it back a little bit, and this is part of the fight. There's going to be a lot of fights that we're standing with the uh, auto workers as well because. They're fighting for fair wages. Every industry's got to fight for these fair wages. Get what they got, what they deserve. 
um, and um, and fight against the AI because AI is coming for everyone's job. Everyone's going to have to protect it in some way because it's not going mm. away. Yep. Everyone's going to need little protections. Yep. So let's do this. We got one more let's chance before the motherfuckers destroy the world. The rich people are <laughs> doing it. They're destroying the fucking world. Fuck them. Yeah. Also, also, don't forget about the weird outcasts who find their way into these parties and eat all the shrimp cocktails. And then you're like thinking it's someone else, but it's some weird fucking freak like me who found their way into this party and like needed a bite to eat. Yeah, but you had to sneak in because you knew. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, shrimp cocktails. I'm, 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 you're fucking up my metaphor. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's a really interesting time because we're, we're living in this, you know, situation where they've gotten, like you said, it's gone too far. Like, you know, it's it, it has some logical basis in the beginning about capital, but then it goes way too far where, like you said, they're getting absolute pittances while they're taking yeah. so much just because they already have the money. Uh, and I think that's interesting to see juxtaposed against a changing entertainment landscape where people are less and less tuning into network TV. They're less and less tuning into these big production houses. And yes. it, it takes the absolute biggest juggernauts of them to move the needle at all. You know, you got to make a new Marvel movie. You got to have a new huge network premiere. And meanwhile, things like TikTok and other content are, are coming up um, so readily and so quickly. Uh, it'd be really interesting to see what happens. I hope to see more of your guys' stuff. And yeah, thank you so you much will. for coming on today. Thank you. Yeah. yeah.